The Catholic Church has been taken to the Human Rights Commission by one of its own. In an unusual case, Catholic priest Father Alex Kapiramala is alleging serious claims of racial harassment, deception and exploitation by the Catholic Church. The Human Rights Commission is taking the first steps in an attempt to resolve the matter between Father Alex and the New Zealand Catholic Bishops Conference. Father Alex alleges he's been denied natural justice, his stipend, accommodation and health care. His lawyer, Craig Tuck, says his client has nowhere to go and is unable to provide for himself in old age. Primarily, there's been emails directed from the management within the Roman Catholic Church that's gone out via the pulpit in many different uh, churches and locations, uh, and that has led to utter destruction, really, of his career and his hopes and his dreams and, you know, his commitment to the Roman Catholic Church, to his faith, uh, to his training and to the support and encouragement that he's given to, you know, countless members of the congregation over many, many years. C Craig, can we just clarify, is this a master-servant relationship, an employer-employee relationship as defined by the Employment Relations Act 2000, or are priests in a church not covered by that kind of employment law? Well, first of all, I, th I think they are covered. But it is a fascinating situation because many within the church would say that a priest has a calling, that it's pro bono, if you like, that it's a gift that they give to the church, that they are volunteers and are therefore not covered. That, now, that, that isn't the case. He is in an employment relationship. There has been a whole lot of activity with the immigration department. There have been all sorts of promises made to him. None of them have been honoured. And the relationship essentially is an employer-employee. So when it falls as apart... As opposed to... Sorry, Craig, when it falls apart and the employee is required to leave, encouraged to leave, or leaves of their own accord, but with grievance, then you have to quantify how much money is owed, right? And how much money has not been earned during a lifetime uh, as a priest. Oh, look, it's an incredible situation because, I mean, technically he hasn't even been paid the minimum wage throughout those years of you know, delivering service to the church. But on top of that, there's been promises which are made, as I understand it, to every priest of accommodation, of care and support throughout their life that they give and the church will look after them for, you know, until they die. That's essentially how it is, was understood by him and by numerous other uh, priests and, and lay people. And this situation really is quite different to that. He's just been cut off at the knees. That's the end of it. Go back to India. Is Where is he now? The, uh, this... So he's in the Bay of Plenty, um, and he's been cared for by a number of members of the congregation and close supporters and, and other members of the Roman Catholic Church who are uh, caring for him. He's, he's distressed. Uh, he's upset. Uh, he's feeling powerless, confused, all those sorts of emotions are going on and he really is now struggling to uh, provoke, you know, to come to terms with well, what remedies are there with the devotion and the time of service that he's given, you know, where to from here. So, so you were taking a case under the Human Rights Act to the Human Rights Commission. Is there a precedent for this? I've looked really hard and can't find one. Has anything like this ever happened before? I've, I've not encountered it at all, not seen anything quite like it. And I know around the world there's all sorts of different uh, activity and actions against the Roman Catholic Church, but this seems to be unique in a number of different ways. Uh, having said that, this is Father Acts is somebody that really is somebody who just wants a fair go, he just wants a fair hearing, he wants some transparency from the church, uh, and, and he wants things put right, nothing more than that. So it really is uh, an interesting situation and, and really the, the church is having to open its doors in terms of what are their processes for resolving these sorts of issues uh, rather than just going on the attack. You know, how can there be a healing process? How can you know, somebody that's dedicated so much life, not just in New Zealand but in other countries, that is networked and integrated with large families of believers, you know, that goes back hundreds of years in his case, uh, how can that be put right? So, uh, hence the complaint and hence the mediation process, which 
we are hoping and relying upon to to deliver uh, you know fairness and justice what will fairness and justice look like well, in his case, uh, he's a man with some years yet to live, and obviously the, the promises that have been made by the church are what he's ultimately after, to have his uh, reputation restored, that there's been all sorts of breaches of natural justice, there's been all, all sorts of issues and problems with that, to have his reputation restored and the care and concern that was expressed pr prior to his employment here in New Zealand is to be honoured. Uh, and that uh, ultimately may be quite a big number in terms of what it costs to provide what has been promised. So presumably you are taking this action through the Human Rights Commission under the Human Rights Act because all previous discussions have led to naught effectively. How has the church responded? Well, certainly the correspondence that I've seen and the attitude has been one of a pretty significant pushback uh, uh, or stonewalling or death by a thousand cuts, i.e. messages that are being sent across the pulpit through emails, through newsletters, different channels really that go on the offensive and go on the attack against him personally. So uh, I, I guess there is a faction within the church which really wants to see things done properly, transparently. There's the human rights discourse within that. Uh, and from my impression, at least, from an outsider looking in, in an action like this, you do get a pretty significant institutional response where we have the power, you don't go away. That's Father Alex's lawyer, Craig Tuck. And we will update you on how that case goes before the Human Rights Commission.